welcome to another week of Teachable Moments. This week, we're discussing how did God prepare us for redemption? And the Catechism answers this question by saying that we've already been redeemed by God through Christ, which is what we'll be reminded of on Easter. And because we've already been redeemed, because we've received this gift and been prepared to be redeemed or prepared for redemption, this means we have a responsibility, a call, a moral obligation to live as the redeemed, to try to bring the love that we've been freely given into the world. So what does that look like though? And it looks like listening to the prophets, seeing and naming the sins of the world, okay? and both announcing the coming of the Messiah and living as Christ lived. This is the answer from our catechism. But we have to ask, what do each of these requirements mean for our lives? It's a great question, Lori. And I'd say to listen to the prophet means to do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. It means listening to the stranger, honoring the land, and even holding community members accountable for their, for our part in co-creating a harmonious world. And then Lisa and Ruth discuss the sins, individual and institutional, in their Teachable Moments video just about two weeks ago. Sins that manifest as racism, sexism, transphobia, homophobia, and other injustices. Then proclaiming the Messiah means having the ability to be freed from sin so that with the help of God, we may live in harmony with God, within ourselves, with our neighbors, and with all of creation. Proclaiming the Messiah means believing that we have been redeemed through Christ and accepting our responsibility of living as the redeemed. A practical application of living as the redeemed with God's help looks like looking at the policies and procedures and spaces that we have in place and assessing what barriers of entry are put in place that prevent certain people from fully participating in redemption. And a reminder that we ourselves are the ones who put those barriers in place. Thanks for that reminder, Lori, because often we put these barriers to entry in place because of our own inability to see the Holy Spirit in our world and see the Holy Spirit in others. To see others as loved, redeemed, and good. So this means though that we also need to look at the policies, procedures, and spaces in our own spiritual and personal lives that prevent us from living in harmony with God, in harmony with others, with ourselves, and with creation. Because this disharmony that we see in the world very well may just be a projection of our inner disharmony. So to get to this place of internal and external harmony is to live into our freely given redeemed state. Yeah. And as we approach Holy Week, we're entering into the period in our liturgical calendar in which we're called to die to our sin, die to our humanity, and embraced the redeemed life. To participate in the continuous cycle of life, death, and new life. And we see this through the highs of Palm Sunday, the confusion of Maundy Thursday, the despair of Good Friday, the uncertainty of Holy Saturday, and the joy of Easter. So when our Christian call to justice work gets heavy and hard, when we encounter periods of sadness and exhaustion, our redemption story tells us that as we work through our sins, work through the isms of the world, there's hope. Hope that we do make progress and hope that we enact our redemption as we move towards a state of harmony in Christ where we no longer ask how to live into redemption, but are just living into it in the life after the life that is to come. And until that day, Holy Week is a reminder that we are called to make heaven on earth a reality.
We invite you to tune in next week for our last se session on the Catechism, Our Theology and Social Justice to hear Jamie as he discusses the mission of the church in bringing about God's kingdom. Thank you.